Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Manage Data tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. In this tutorial, you'll work with a number of datasets useful to environmental restoration projects in and around the city of Christchurch, New Zealand. You'll explore the data, convert it to a common file format and spatial reference, and clip it to a study area. The goal is to create a streamlined data collection in a geodatabase that can be shared by GIS professionals working on related projects in the same geographic area. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. I've downloaded the project data from ArcGIS Online, opened ArcGIS Pro, and signed in to my ArcGIS Online account. Click the option to start without a template. When you start ArcGIS Pro without a template, you are not prompted to create a project. This tutorial is about working with data that is stored in a geodatabase, so there is no need to save your work as a project, but you can do so optionally at any time during your ArcGIS Pro session. Reset the panes for geoprocessing so that only the contents, catalog, and geoprocessing panes are open. Let's start by adding a folder connection to the tutorial data I downloaded earlier. In the catalog pane, you can see that there is a default geodatabase and a home folder. However, because we did not create a project, these are stored in a temporary directory that will be deleted unless we decide to save the project. Right-click on folders and add a folder connection. You want to navigate to wherever you saved the data earlier. Click OK to create the connection. You can see the folder with our data now appears in the catalog pane. Expand the folder, subfolders, and geodatabases inside of it. The folders contain shapefiles and the geodatabases contain feature classes. You'll examine the datasets to learn more about them. On the View tab, open the Catalog View. A Catalog View opens. On the ribbon, the Catalog tab appears. The Contents pane shows the contents of the catalog. In the Contents pane, expand folders and expand the Manage Data folder. Click the Planning Geodatabase. Its contents appear in the catalog view. There are two feature classes, Avon River and Plan Area. Click Plan Area to preview the feature class's metadata in the Details panel. On the Geography tab, you can preview the spatial data. Click the Plan Area to see a pop-up with the feature's attributes. Close the pop-up and switch to the Table tab to preview the feature class's attributes. The table has one record with name and area attributes. To learn more about the dataset, you'll open its properties. Right-click the feature class and click Properties. Expand its spatial reference and note that its projected coordinate system is WGS 1984 Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere. A world projection such as Mercator is not ideal for a local dataset. You'll change the projection later. Close the properties and click the Boundaries Geodatabase in the Contents pane. In the Catalog view, select the Community Boards feature class. Open its properties and note that it is in the NZGD2000 New Zealand Transverse Mercator Projected Coordinate System, which is a standard for New Zealand maps and data. One of your goals in this tutorial is to put all the datasets in this coordinate system. We could continue previewing datasets one by one, but we'll add them to a map so we can look at them all together. In the Catalog pane, press the Control key and select each dataset except for the park's shapefile. Right-click any of them and add them to a new map. Drag the park's shapefile into the map as well. Let's open the properties for this map and rename it to Starting Data. Click OK and note that the map name has changed in the Contents pane as well as on the Map View tab. Let's rearrange some of the administrative boundaries layers so they don't obscure features in the other layers. Drag the Region, Community Boards, and Districts layers down just above the base map. Zoom to the Plan Area layer. Let's look for a dataset that can help narrow down the area of interest to the area around Christchurch. Change the map scale to 1 to 200,000. On the Map tab, click Add Data and switch to the Living Atlas portal. Search for New Zealand Urban Areas. Select the NZ Urban Rural Indicator Area's current web feature layer and click OK to add it to the map. Let's zoom in on the Christchurch urban area, which is this large orange patch here. Make sure the layer is selected in the Contents pane, click the Explore drop-down arrow, and click Selected in Contents. Click the Christchurch urban area to open its pop-up. 
The pop-up confirms that this is the correct feature for Christchurch. Close the pop-up and open the layers properties. Change the name to Urban Area. Change the Explore Tools selection back to Topmost Layer. As you process the starting data, you'll save output datasets to a new geodatabase in a new folder. Make the catalog view active and create a new file geodatabase. Browse to the folder where you extracted the tutorial data and create a new folder to store the geodatabase. Rename the folder Christchurch Renewal and press Enter. Open the empty folder and type Christchurch data in the name box as the name of your new geodatabase. Click Save and see that the new geodatabase has been created and added to the project. Select the Christchurch data geodatabase you just created and on the Manage tab, click Make Default so that your geoprocessing outputs will be saved there by default. Now that we have a new default geodatabase, we can clip our starting data down to the Christchurch area using the Pairwise Clip geoprocessing tool. We will run the tool as a batch tool to process multiple input datasets at once. As mentioned earlier, you want your output data to be in the New Zealand Transverse Mercator coordinate system. Before you run the pairwise clip tool, you'll make a tool environment setting that projects the input datasets as needed to this coordinate system. Make the starting data map view active. Make the urban area layer the only selectable layer, and select the Christchurch urban area. Make the geoprocessing pane active and search for the pairwise clip tool. Right-click the tool and click batch. Make sure that input features is selected and uncheck the box for add output datasets to an open map. You will add the output datasets to a new map later. Click next. Next to batch input features, click add many and toggle all the checkboxes. Uncheck the administrative layers for community boards, districts, and region. Click add. A toggle button appears under Urban Area because there is a selection on the layer. For clip features, select Urban Area. The toggle button appears again indicating that the tool will clip only to the selected feature, which is what you want. In the Output Feature class box, delete the prefix and only leave name surrounded by percent symbols. The percent symbols indicate that the name of the input layer will be the output layer name. Click the Environments tab and click Select Coordinate System. Expand layers and select the NZGD 2000 New Zealand Transverse Mercator projection to make sure that all the layers will use the correct local projection. Click OK and add this geographic transformation to ensure that the datasets are projected as accurately as possible. Now we can run the tool. Let's examine the output datasets using the catalog view before adding them to a new map. In the Contents pane, select the Christchurch Data Geodatabase. Open the properties for the Plan Area Feature class and note that the spatial reference is now in the New Zealand Transverse Mercator projection. Close the properties. Click the Avon River Feature class to select it, press the Shift key, and click Urban Area to select all the feature classes. Right-click any of the feature classes and add them to a new map. Let's rename the map to Final Data. Drag the Urban Area layer down so that it is just above the base map. When you ran the pairwise clip tool, you didn't process the boundary layers because you want to preserve their territorial integrity. However, these layers cover a much larger part of the Canterbury region than you need. You'll make a spatial selection of the features in the community boards and districts layers that have area in common with the Christchurch urban area. The region layer is too general for our needs, so we will leave it out of the analysis. Make the starting data map view active. Press the Control key and click the Urban Area layer to deselect it. With the key still pressed, select the Districts and Community Boards layers. On the Map tab, click Copy and return to the Final Data Map view. In the Contents pane, make sure Final Data is selected and click Paste. Click Select by Location and confirm that the Districts layer, which was already selected in the Contents pane, appears as the Input Features. Add Community Boards to the Input Features as well. Confirm that the relationship parameter is set to intersect, and set the selecting features to urban area. Click OK to select all of the features in the districts and community boards layers that intersect the Christchurch urban area feature. There are 10 selected features. Right-click the districts layer and zoom to selection. These two boundary layers are relevant to your final data because restoration projects may be subject to local political jurisdiction. At the top of the contents pane, 
Click the List by Selection tab to see how many features from each layer are selected. Go back to the List by Drawing Order tab. We are done with the starting data map, so let's close it. Let's copy the selected features to our new geodatabase. Make the geoprocessing pane active and open another tool. Search for Copy Features. Right-click the tool and click Batch. Accept the default settings and click Next. Next to Batch Input Features, click Add Many. Check the boxes for the Community Boards and Districts layers and click Add. There will be toggle buttons displaying the number of selected records for each layer. Delete the prefix for the Output Feature class as you did earlier. In the Contents pane, uncheck the checkboxes for districts and community boards so you aren't confused when layers with the same names are added to the map. Run the tool. Remove the original districts and community boards layers. Drag the administrative layers to the bottom of the drawing order just above the base map. Make the catalog view active and note that the geodatabase now includes the two layers. Because you started without a template, no project file was saved to your computer. The working maps you made were useful for exploring data and choosing input layers for tools, but you don't need to keep them. Exit out of ArcGIS Pro without saving. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.